Welcome to Custom Animation's presentation on chemical hazards and safety data sheets, or the SDS. Anyone exposed to a substance has the right to know. This always starts with reviewing the appropriate SDS. The SDS is a detailed document outlining the hazards of handling substances. You will find the SDS consists of several pages and always has the same 16 sections. First up is the product name and product code. In section two, we can see the substance is rated as hazardous with the signal word danger, as well as the assigned GHS pictograms. The hazard classifications and hazard statements are then listed. As you can see, this is undoubtedly must read information. The prevention and precautionary statements then follow this. This is also a must read. Section three provides information on the proportions of the hazardous ingredients. Section four is where you need to go to find first aid information, starting with the poison's information center number and the first aid treatment for inhalation. Then we have the first aid treatment for soft tissue contact. Rounding off with the first aid for ingestion and notes for treating doctor. Section 5 leads with the HASCHEM code and the suitable extinguishing media or fire extinguisher type. Next are the hazards that may start or exacerbate an existing fire. Finally, advice to firefighters fighting a fire involving the substance covered by this SDS. Section 6 gives advice on how to handle a leak, spill, or accidental release of a substance. This information starts with tips on handling a small spill. Next, information on handling a large spill is provided, including the required PPE, equipment, and techniques. If handling large quantities, ensure a suitable spill kit is always on hand. Section 7 is another must-read for all those affected. First listed is the advice for the safe handling of the reagent. Then listed is the advice for safe storage to prevent the substance from becoming a long-forgotten ticking time bomb. Another must-read is Section 8, which starts with the exposure limits for the chemical covered by the SDS. Next listed are the engineering controls or measures. Above PPE on the hierarchy of controls, engineering controls are a more effective way of reducing hazards. Then appears the personal protective equipment or PP. Ensure you take notice of the type of PPE suggested and any standards that are given. Please be aware that donning the incorrect PPE or not following the correct protocols may offer you little protection. Finally, we are provided with hygiene measures. Section 9 provides information on the physical and chemical properties, such as appearance, odor, pH, and flashpoint. Section 10 contains critical details of any hazardous reactions that may occur if the chemical is exposed to certain conditions or comes in contact with incompatible materials. Section 11 is where we go to learn how the chemical impacts health. After a general comment, we see acute or rapid effects of inhalation, followed by the acute effects of soft tissues and ingestion. Continuing down the Section 11 list, we come upon acute toxicity or rapid poisoning. Wrapping up Section 11, we can see the chronic or long-term exposure effects on health. Section 12 provides detailed information on the ecological hazard of the said chemical. Section 13 details how the chemical should be correctly disposed of, recycled, or reclaimed. Section 14 lists the information required for transportation, such as the UN number, transport hazard class, and packing groups related to the chemical's transport by road, rail, sea, or air. In Section 15, we find information such as international or national regulatory details. The final section provides any other information relevant to the preparation of the SDS, including the date of its preparation, a key or legend to abbreviations, acronyms, and references used. So that wraps up our deep dive into the SDS. Remember, if you use or are affected by any chemical substance, you have the right to know. 
and this always starts by reviewing the appropriate SDS.